Um, paper is titled, Reimagining the Inferiority Complex in Black Women's Leadership Roles. Many people will remember the year 2008 as the year Barack Obama was elected as President of the United States of America. This, in fact, is true. However, President Obama did not go to the White House on his own. He was accompanied by his beautiful and radiant wife, First Lady Michelle Obama, as well as his daughters, Sasha and Malia. Another way 2008 should be remembered is the first time a black woman was the First Lady of the United States of America. Michelle Obama's role as First Lady ignited a spark in the hearts of black women throughout the country. Black women could see themselves in a role that we never occupied. Black women's roles in the White House was limited until 2008. Black women were consistently made to feel inferior as if they were not capable of serving in leadership roles. When Michelle Obama entered the White House, she actively pursued initiatives such as Let's Move, which addresses childhood obesity. In addition, her project Let Girls Learn, which focuses on the education of girls around the world. The leadership of Michelle Obama caused a paradigm shift for black women. It was a reminder of the strength that is within every single black woman. But this astonishing leadership did not first begin with Michelle Obama. This leadership within black women accompanied us along the Middle Passage. This proven leadership was evident during slavery in the efforts of our mothers, Harriet Tubman, in Sojourner Truth. These women passed the torch to the next generation of women, such as Anna Julia Cooper, Ida B. Wells, Mary Church Terrell, and Mary McLeod Bethune. The collective efforts of these women expanded the women's club movement and advancement of education for African Americans. The leadership journey was continued in the civil rights movement by our sisters, Rosa Parks, Amelia Boyden, Diane Nash, and Fannie Lou Hamer. Without the works of these women, it would have been nearly impossible to navigate through the injustices of Jim Crow and segregation. The light of leadership did not burn out in the next generation with passionate souls such as Sonia Sanchez, Nikki Giovanni, Maya Angelou, and Angela Davis. Their actions, their words and actions produced a heartbeat that would move black women for decades to come. Their writings would become inspiration for contemporary black women leaders. Contemporary black women would become the CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, politicians, educators, entertainers, and every other field of human endeavor. It is through their collective effort, strength, and perseverance that in 2008, a black woman would be the first lady of the United States of America. However, the history books do not proclaim this truth about black women. Society does not view the excellence of black women the same way. From the enslavement of African people until present day, African American women leaders have been met with obstacles and barriers. These obstacles and barriers are put into place as an attempt to keep black women from achieving their goals. These obstacles and barriers hinder black women from their ability to view themselves as superior in leadership, which produces an inferiority complex. When black women are disabled to lead, it automatically places them in the category of followers. It is a necessity to create more paths for African American women leaders in order to reimagine the inferiority complex that exists in leadership. As previously mentioned, the foundation for African American women leadership was laid centuries ago. The challenges that black women were facing in generations past are innumerable. Black women of the past had to rely on fewer resources than what is available today. As Oprah Winfrey once said, I am where I am today because of the bridges that I crossed. Sojourner Truth was a bridge. Madam C.J. Walker was a bridge. Fannie Lou Hamer was a bridge. African American women have been endowed with the strength and wisdom because of the efforts of black women in the past. In A History of African American Leadership, Bruce J. Deerenfield and John White explore the trailblazers and pioneers of African American women leadership. Two of the pioneers that White and Deerenfield pay homage to are Harriet Tubman and Mary McLeod Bethune. Harriet Tubman's orchestration of the Underground Railroad is a premier example of leadership. With limited resources, she was able to save the lives of many slaves. When Harriet suffered a traumatic brain injury as a teenager, instead of viewing this as a crippling experience, she saw it as a mean of God trying to speak to her. It is from that moment that Harriet understood that her purpose in life was to save people. Tubman once said, in all my years as a railroad conductor, I never ran my train off the track and I never lost a passenger. Her inner strength allowed her to see the ultimate goal. The freedom of black people was what mattered most to Tubman. Although her work with the Underground Railroad is what she will primarily be remembered for, Harriet Tubman was responsible for many other astonishing tasks. During the Civil War, she used her income to create a laundry which all allowed for black women to earn money for washing military uniforms. Tubman could have used this money for anything else, but she was consistently giving back. It is a shame that at the end of her life, she died poor. Despite her financial status at the time of her death, the memory of Harriet Tubman will always be rich. At her mo monument dedication, Booker T. Washington described Tubman by stating, it is most fitting and proper from every point 
a view that the name Harriet Tubman should be perpetuated by means of this tablet so that her memory and deeds can live in the minds and hearts of the present generation and can be held as an object lesson for all time to the generations that follow. Her boldness and brilliance is an example of black women for eternity to do what is best despite the cost. In a like manner, Mary McLeod Bethune is also a pioneer among black women's leadership. At the time of her death, media sources such as Time Magazine exalted her. Time noted, nothing on earth could stop Mary McLeod Bethune. She was an unstoppable force. Mary McLeod Bethune was a woman who knew her purpose and did not stray from her life's mission. Bethune was a teacher, administrator, civil rights leader, presidential advisor, government official, and humanitarian. At a time when the education was limited for black women, Mary McLeod Bethune's work as an educator led to the founding of Daytona Educational and in an Industrial Institute for Negro Girls. At that time, all she had was five little girls, a dollar and a half, and faith in God. Bethune could have been prevented from persevering but based on the lack of resources. Nonetheless, she continued on and eventually the Daytona Educational and Industrial Institute for Negro Girls would become Bethune-Cookman, which is an HBCU that is still standing today. In addition, Mary McLeod Bethune was an integral part of the women's club movement. In 1924, she served as the president of the NACW, and in 1935, she transitioned into becoming the president of the National Council of Negro Women. Bethune had little idle time. She was heavily involved in organizations such as the NAACP, the Urban League, and the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. She was a board member for Planned Parenthood and the Girl Scouts. Bethune was extremely strategic in the, her efforts. During her role as director of Negro Affairs, for the National Youth Administration, she put into place an informal federal council on Negro Affairs, the Black Cabinet. This cabinet consisted of 30 competent black staffers. It is important to note the way that Mary McLeod Bethune utilized the principle of Sankofa. When she was in this prestigious role, she knew it was important to pave a way for other African Americans in the government. She set a precedent for the necessity of going back and reclaiming others. When this powerhouse of a woman died, she left the world with the following passage. I leave you love, I leave you hope, I leave you the challenge of developing confidence in one another. I leave you a thirst for education, I leave you respect for the use of power, I leave you faith, I leave you racial dignity, I leave you a desire to live harmoniously with your fellow men, I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Dear and Feldon White, Mary McLeod Bethune leaves a black woman with legacy of the ability to utilize each other and every one of our youth, our talents in order to change the world. Regardless of the strong leadership foundation that was laid, black women still are not receiving the credit that is deserved. Despite our tremendous efforts, black women are seen as invisible when it comes to our leadership roles. No matter how hard a black woman works in communities, churches, schools, corporate America, or anywhere else, it is still challenging for black women to be presented with an opportunity that she deserves. In April 2015, Fortune magazine published an article, Why So Few Black Women Are Senior Managers in 2015, by Valerie Perdue Vons from Columbia University. This article highlights the lack of black women in senior managerial positions using data from the Center for Talent Innovation. The Center for Talent Innovation is a nonprofit that promotes diversity. Although this article specifically relates to leadership roles in corporate America, it can still pertain to all avenues of leadership. It would be unrealistic for someone to believe that in 2015, black women do not desire these leadership roles. In fact, the report found that black women are 2.8 times as likely as white women to aspire to a powerful position with a prestigious title. 40% of black women have clear long-term goals compared to 32% of white women. These figures are examples of why the inferiority complex needs to be revised. The numbers solidify the belief that black women desire to be in charge. Black women are not reluctant to advance their careers. Within the report, there is evidence of the marginalization of black women. According to this report, 26% of black women feel their talents are not recognized by their superiors. The report provides examples of an idea being stated by a black woman and it being ignored. However, if the same idea was posed by another person, it would be praised. These actions allow for women to be invisible in these spaces. In, this, in some situations, when people think of leadership, in most situations, the first person that comes to mind is that of a white male. Next, it would be a white female following the image of a black male and then possibly the face of a black woman. The media perpetuates this idea by consistently providing images of white leaders. This is very problematic. In 2015, it is unfair to believe that the ideal leader is a white man. Black women are obtaining the requirements that are needed for these positions. It is much easier to envision a black woman in a role which appears to have less power such as administrative positions or support staff. The placement of black women in such roles is used as a mechanism of confinement. Although there are talented black women leaders, the numbers are still low.
For example, this explains why out of all the Fortune 500 companies, there are currently only five African-American CEOs. Out of the five CEOs, only one of these CEOs is an African-American woman. Ursula Burns currently serves as the CEO of Xerox. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 13.2% of the United States is comprised of African-Americans. These statistics are discouraging. Similarly, the numbers were low on the Forbes magazine Top 100 Powerful Women in the World. Out of the 100 women, only 11 were black. Some of the names on this list included First Lady Michelle Obama, Beyonce Knowles Carter, Loretta Lynch, Ursula Burns, and Oprah Winfrey. These numbers, or lack thereof, continue to add to the distorted image of what it means to be a leader in this country. The lack of black women's leadership in these high corporate roles adds to the narrative that black women are not valued and must remain marginalized. Furthermore, it is time for black women to break the glass ceiling in leadership. In Shattering the Glass Ceiling, the Leadership Development of African American Women in Higher Education, Dr. Deanna Davis and Cecilia Maldonado define glass ceiling as an invisible barrier to advancement of based on attitudinal and organizational biases. This is not to discredit the work that has already been done. Although the statistics are discouraging, it does not mean that black women cannot advance. The first way to break the glass ceiling is creating more opportunities for young girls to see their leadership potential. If young black girls do not have the opportunity to view their leadership horizon, it will remain non-existent. They will not see themselves as leaders and simply as followers. That is, why, that is what is occurring now and it aligns with what Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie believes. We teach girls to shrink themselves, to make themselves smaller. We say to girls, you can have ambition, but not too much. There should be more encouragement from adults to motivate girls to run for class president, be the team captain, join clubs and organizations, or lead a service project. There are programs for youth that are created to enhance leadership skills. As keepers and protectors of our youth, we should make it a priority to expose them to programs such as Black Girls Rocks, Girl Scouts, or other leadership development organizations. Throughout the summer would be an ideal time to allow your daughter, niece, granddaughter, or loved one to participate in such activities. That is how leadership skills are developed early. If a young girl has these opportunities from a young age, just imagine how powerful she will be in her 20s. Consequently, this will result in positive self-esteem for young girls. This will eliminate feelings of feeling inferior when they are the ones calling the shots. Another step would be allowing for more black girls to serve as interns. The creation of these internships is not the responsibility of our young girls. It is the responsibility of adults. Most companies offer intern programs during summer break. But how many of us make it our business to forward the applications to those who we know? Ursula Burns is an example of how the positive trajectory of a person can shift their life narrative. Burns went from an intern at Xerox in 1982 to chairman and CEO in 2009. Who would have imagined that the intern who was making coffee, filing papers, and running errands would become the first black woman CEO of a Fortune 500 company? It is imperative that black girls are exposed to internships. There are a plethora of jobs in the world that many youth have never heard of. In What's Holding Women Back, Wellington, Croft, and Gurkovich argue that women may not be aspiring to these roles because they are not aware that leadership positions are open to them. Internships allow people to work in close proximity to the people who they ideally would like to become. It provides people with the opportunity to dream and hopes to turn the dream into a reality. How can a person imagine being in the corner office if they have never been in the office building? Internships produce opportunities to have the work, of the, the work experience that most jobs require after graduating from college. These experiences create avenues of networking, even if the person does not continue with that company in the future. They have, worked in, they have created a network of people that can help elevate them to the next level. In order for the previous point to function properly, it will mean that we need more black gatekeepers. These are the people who open the doors and create opportunities for black women to enter. In order to ultimately change the face of leadership, including black gatekeepers is a must. If not, the gatekeepers will continue to be other people. Davis and Maldonado indicate that gatekeepers are sponsored, that the gatekeepers or sponsors have traditionally been white men. They found in their research that mentoring and sponsorship by males was prominent in the experiences of these African American women as they recognized that sponsorship was vital to their career advancement and provided support in their professional growth and development. The participants expressed that the sponsors have often provided guidance, professional mentoring, and upward career mobility. Sponsorship from unexpected individuals was heralded as a key element in the success of these women, that these women attained. Questions must be raised as to why the white man is viewed as our salvation in order to obtain leadership roles. This notion has to be revised because it is problematic. If this ideology was working, then we would see more black women 
in higher leadership roles. However, it is not. It is very limited. There is no guarantee that white men will consistently serve as a sponsor or a gatekeeper for black women. One of these women in the study stated, I am a black woman serving in a certain position in a college. Your responsibility changes because it is not just about me. It is about ensuring that they see other women like me who can do the work and to do better to improve and be a leader in all of that. You try to fight the struggle for other women as well. The more black women that we get into leadership roles, the more opportunities there will be for them to open the doors for their fellow sisters. Lastly, there needs to be more edification of black women in leadership roles. The time has passed to wait for society to celebrate black women the way they deserve. One of the most enchanting nights for black women is when Black Girls Rock airs on television. This is a show for black women by black women. The founder and executive director for Black Girls Rock, Beverly Bond, is a truly a visionary. Her vision of the celebration of black girls and women is exemplary of what is needed in society. This edification provides black girls a chance to view black excellence on their television screens. The manner in which other women are edified gives women, young and old, the desire to keep pushing. We have to continue to exalt and praise black women for their accomplishments. One day society will catch on, and if they do not, it will not matter because black women would already know how valued they are. Recently, the astonishing Viola Davis became the first African-American woman to win an Emmy for her, leading actress, her role as a leading actress in a drama series, How to Get Away with Murder. Viola unapologet is unapologetically black and not ashamed to say it. Regardless of how often she is chastised for her hair or dark skin, she consistently proves others wrong. Her demeanor and drive led her to breaking the glass ceiling that has prevented black women's advancement. During her acceptance speech, she made a profound statement. The only thing that separates black women from anyone else is an opportunity. Black women have been consistently disregarded in every field. This marginalization was put in place to make black women feel inferior. By reflecting on the history of black women and collectively working towards dismantling the systems that make us inferior, black women will be able to shatter every single glass ceiling put in place. In the words of scholar Kimberly Williams Crenshaw, it is not about supplication, it's about power. It's not about asking, it's about demanding. It's not about convincing those who are currently in power. It's about ch changing the face of power itself. Thank you.